invite you to open your Bibles to 2 Timothy, the last verses of 2 Timothy, that's chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, urban myths uh, out. Uh, there was one recently that said a very dangerous and deadly jungle spider had migrated to the USA and was killing people. Uh, I started one this morning. I told you that there's a little geezer in South Africa that keeps filling a hot water tank. <laughs> well, I neglected to tell you that in Africa and the rest of the world except America, a geezer is a, a hot water tank, <laughs> hot water eater. I didn't even get that right. Uh, Jeff, can you go to the urban legends on the next slide? <clears throat> there are a whole list of urban legends. Uh, that's just the top ten. And uh, those of you who are on Facebook, you've probably fallen prey to a few of them. Uh, I saw a picture the other day of a little child, and, and he looked like he'd been really hurt. Well, that one's up there too. And then my sister was telling me how you're going to have to uh, pay for Facebook. And that's why that one's up there as well. And the number one is the, is the copyright, uh, that you can put out something on Facebook, and then magically they're not going to worry about your copyright. Well... You know, we want to do things uh, in a proper way. We want to be reliable. We want to be able to be counted on. And so these kinds of things really get us when we see somebody is putting some information out there specifically to uh, deceive you or to let you know this is information you cannot count on. And then you really don't know what can you count on. And that's where Paul finds himself in uh, 2 Timothy. What can he count on? How many of you pride yourselves for being dependable? If you say you're going to do something, will you be there? Okay. So many people have grown up in this world and maybe have come into our church family, and they have not been in the most dependable environments. And so they find it very strange to be in a church family where you can actually depend on people. We uh, have a situation here where Paul is near the end of his life and he thinks he can depend on people. You would think that Paul the Apostle should have been able to, right? And there was only one person that he could depend on. Anybody want to guess who that is? I'll make it real easy. The arm of flesh will fail you. Every single person that you see in this world will fail you. There's only one that will never fail you. And the quicker you figure this out, the easier life is going to be. Jesus Christ will never, ever let you down. Now, one of the blessings of being part of a church like this is that we think and we feel that we have some kind of a support system. But even in a wonderful church like this, you can find a time when you might be alone. And so when we look at it, we see uh, Paul is talking about these different attitudes or aspects. He says, uh, to desert or defend. Can you count on me to desert or defend Summit's work? Can you count on me to desert or to be dependable Summit witness? Can you count on me to be a deserter or a deliverer in Summit's spiritual war? And these are the three things that I looked at and I found in verses 16, 17, and 18. Again, the theme of this month is faithfulness. And when it comes to faithfulness, we have to understand that what, what does the word faithfulness mean to you? One of the synonyms to me is not just church attendance, but it's are you dependable? And specifically what I want to ask you is are you dependable to God? Can God rely on you? When the going gets tough, are you there? And so here we have verse 16, it says, At my first offense, no one came to stand by me. But all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. And so it's very easy how I came across that first point. To desert or defend Summit's work. I could have put anything. To desert or defend Paul in his hour of need. To desert or defend a parent or a child or a sibling or uh, somebody who's spiritually struggling. Uh, I got a note from Anthony the other day. Actually, it was last week, and he said, uh, congratulations on your new car, your new second-hand car. And he put a link, 
And the link was to the Sunday sermon that we just had preached that night before. And so here's a new Christian who grew up in this congregation and is still being fed because every single lesson that gets preached in this congregation, he goes and watches. And, and, and so he depends on that. And are we dependable in that? You know, we can't just bring Christians in and then just leave them. We've got to be dependable people. And so what is your attitude towards Summit's work? Are you indifferent or are you concerned about what goes on at Summit? Are you committed as seen by your attendance and your passion in the work? Are you idle or are you passionate? And when I say idle or passionate, when I say idle, I'm talking about idolatry. And uh, go back to that, uh, that first slide there. Uh, this is somebody who uh, decided that, that the, and, and this is not an exact picture of this person's uh, uh, man cave, but this person decided that he was going to accumulate all the toys that he could. And whenever he would come to church would be when he did not have any other activity to take care of his boredom. And so he very rarely came to church. And when he did, he said things like this. The sermon was too long and boring. The singing was not stirring enough. The young people were too noisy. Uh, they, asked too much, they asked for too much money. And, and he had a whole list of things. But one day, he got very deathly ill. And, uh, and he was in hospital for quite a while. And near the end of his stint, a friend came and he said, You know, I really missed somebody from that church coming to visit me. You know, that's my home congregation. Nobody turned up. And they said, and, and it had been about a year since he was in church the last time. And somebody said, Well, hadn't you heard? About a year ago, that church closed its doors. And this is what he said. Uh, this poor sick man replied, That's a shame. They let it die. I wonder why they let that happen. <laughs> um, this is your congregation. This congregation is what you want it to be. And I don't believe that we have uh, messed up priorities in this congregation. I believe that we, have, we know what's the most important. And your life doesn't make sense unless you do this. Everything in your life is going to unravel unless you know this. The number one thing in Paul's life, and the number one thing in all of our lives, hopefully, is what? God. Number two in my life is my spouse. Number three is my was my children when they were still at home. And number four is my job. Number five is if I'm a student. And number six would be my hobbies. And it's in that order. <laughs> you know? And so it makes life very easy and very clear uh, when, when I've got to make decisions because I can do that at a moment's notice. But if we have all the toys in the world and we're not taking care of God's uh, work, then, then we are really letting him down. So at my first defense, no one came to stand by me. Who does this remind you of? Who, 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 who was the other person who said that? Who, who was the other person who was deserted? It was Christ, wasn't it? And uh, no one was there. You know, everybody just took off and fled. And so we need to realize that there, you know, there's going to come a time probably when we're going to be facing something all alone. And it's at that point we must realize that there's one that will never let us down. It's Christ. And don't give up, you know. Um, we are all human and we will make mistakes. Secondly, when you look at verse 17, <clears throat> to desert, can you count on me to desert or be, de or be dependable, a dependable summit witness? When you think about people who are dependable, what do you think about? Here in verse 17 it says, but the Lord, see everybody let me down, but the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear, might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. So the second point has to do with Summit's witness. And the reason I see that there is because when the Lord stood by Paul, what did he do with that second chance or third chance or whatever that he was given? Because Paul was you know, near death many times. What did he do with it when he was rescued from the lion's mouth? He taught Gentiles, right? And so I, if I am a, 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 a dependable, uh, uh, if some, somebody you can depend on, not only will I defend the work at Summit, but I will also make sure that I'm a dependable witness to the work of Summit. So what, is it, what are the different categories that we need to be dependable when it comes to the witness that we have? 
I think, I think one of the things that churches are judged by is the attitude. What kind of an attitude do we have? And our attitude is gauged on how quick can we forgive. How quick can we forgive each other? Here is a scripture in James chapter 3. James chapter 3 is about, remember, the tongue. And if you look at James chapter 3 verse 2, the ESV has it a little bit off, but so I'll, I'll give you a better word that the ESV has here in James 3 verse 2. For we all stumble in many ways. The word stumble there is actually offend. For we all offend in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble or offend, if anyone does not offend in what he says, he is a perfect man, or able always to bridle his whole body. And so we gain to offend people. We gain to cause people to stumble. And it's awful that we do that. But as quick as that happens, we need to either let it go or we need to seek forgiveness. I know that there's many people I can depend on in this congregation. I can depend on Earl. Earl, what is the temperature going to be on Friday? Earl will tell you the temperature is going to be 30 degrees, right? Okay, so Earl will tell me, and, 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 if so, and he's already said, I must tell the wind, get the flowers in. Uh, he's dependable. He's dependable in that instance. There was a, a problem with getting to the, to the church building today, and I received two text notes uh, saying, uh, we're going to be running a little bit late. Can you help me? Did you catch that horse? Chris had car trouble, so I, I imagine one of the horses got away, right? <laughs> you lost some horsepower, and you had to get it back, but you, you made it, and, and, but, but you let the church know. Uh, some people were stuck in traffic, and, and they, let, they let us know. That is dependable, you understand? That's what it's all about. Ruth Ann couldn't make it to church this morning. She said, I'm going to be in hospital again. I've got to receive IV with potassium, but I'll be there tonight. <laughs> and she got in, oh, about an hour and a half ago, and she lives way over in Florence, but yes, she is. Uh, that's, that's, what we, that's what it takes for us to have a congregation that can say we are dependable. We're dependable with our witnesses. Also, we need to have not just a dependable uh, uh, witness in that we forgive each other, we also need to be dependable in that we need to be friends with each other. You need a friend. You need a good friend. And uh, those good friends aren't always there, uh, aren't always easy to come by. Also, we need to be dependable in our finances, in the way we give. Um, one of the things I, can, I learned many years ago, and it's helped me out a lot, is when I put money in the plate, guess who that money belongs to? It belongs to... God. And this is God's church. And God determines what he's going to do. Now, I know we have elders and we have ministry leaders and deacons and stuff. And so we have a semblance of where we're controlling the funds. But if you really look at it, God determines what he's going to do with his congregation. And so we need to be dependable in every area of our life. Uh, there was a time when uh, frequent flyers came up with, I think four, uh, right now there's 14 trillion frequent flyer miles available. And so people aren't just making decisions anymore to, to travel a certain way. They're looking at what kind of perks they can get. And I saw an advertisement today. If you have this kind of Capital One card or whatever, then you can do whatever you want with your, with your miles. But this is what Paul used with his, uh, his frequent ship miles. It wasn't fl flyer miles. In 2 Corinthians 11 verse 25, he said, Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day, I have been in the deep. Paul was very loyal. Every single moment that he had, he used to be a witness for God. He used to, to be a friend to people. And, uh, and so it is a little bit astounding here where he can say, you know, at the end of his life, he's learned that everybody forsook him except, except God. The third way that we can be dependable is either you can depend on us to be deserter or to deliver summit from, a, from its spiritual wars. Is there anybody here that has any doubt as to the fact that we have a spiritual war going on? You know, you look at what's going on on TV and you look at what's going on in our country and you may think, well, that's just, you know, the signs of the times. But the church has always had this. It's always been a very big struggle. So if you can go to point number three, Jeff, we'll look at verse 18. And it says there in verse 18, the Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into the kingdom, into the heavenly kingdom. 
To Him be glory forever and ever. Amen. If you drop back in uh, a few verses from verse 18, if you look at verses 6 through 8 of 1 Timothy chapter 4, you hear what Paul is saying there as far as the spiritual wars are concerned. He said, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And I really like these last words. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. There's going to come a day when we're going to be able to rejoice. When we're going to be able to look at our Heavenly Father and we can say, we, we're home. Uh, one of the words that we will hear is similar to what you hear in Matthew 25, verses 21 and 23. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And I don't want you to be hard in yourselves right now. I want you to understand when it comes to faithfulness, Jesus walked this path first. He knew how difficult it was. In fact, he knew that without him, we would never make it. He understands that. And so if you're hard on yourself, that's okay if you're trying to get better. But if you're hard on yourself because the devil is saying to you, you're terrible, you're awful, you're not going to make it, don't listen to that. Just do the very best you can. And, and, and keep trying to get better. Keep trying to do just a little bit better. Uh, you know, you, you've seen people grow faithfully. Uh, Bill, over the years, you, as elder, an elder probably have noticed, uh, people come from a very young age. And... Uh, and then you watch after 20, 30 years, and you say, wow, look at that, you know? And it's amazing how that growth, growth occurs. What do you think life would be like without a shepherd? I think I've got one more slide, Jeff. What would life be like without a shepherd? This is a strange fact. In 2005, in Turkey, they lost at one occasion 1,500 sheep. What happened is... The first sheep decided it was going to go straight. And guess what sheep do? They follow each other. They keep following each other. And, and, and every now and then I come across a congregation, uh, not that I've been personally a part of, that I've worked with, but I, that I've read about, that didn't understand that. They thought that they had to follow an elder or an eldership or a deacon or a preacher is a big one. And guess where those churches are? Every single person will let you down. Definitely. You know, accept it. Let's move on. Uh, we're not perfect. Uh, but if we try the very, very best we can, then we can know there will come a day when God is going to say to us, you know what, you were there. One of the concepts that uh, was big in my mind as I grew up as a Christian, I was just a, a few days old when I entered into military service. And there was something that they said, we would tolerate anything in the military except one thing. It's called AWOL. Anybody not know what AWOL means? It means absent without leave. And, and yes, we can't always make everything, but we can say, you know what, I can't be there tonight, or uh, um, can you try to substitute me? And, and we can be that kind of dependable person. And sometimes we really get really down. And uh, we maybe get uh, deep and dark and depressed, or, or like me, I'm sort of, I think I'm battling a 24 hour something. <laughs> and, 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 you know, we have to lean on each other a little bit, uh, a little bit more during those, those times. But we know that God can count on us as best as possible. And so I want to encourage you, if you're a, if you're a relatively new Christian, um, you can relax a little bit, because this church... If they tell you they're going to do something, guess what? They're going to come through. And, and you, can, you can accept that. And for the rest of us, um, uh, understand that, you know, we're not always where we need to be. But, but let's, even Paul the Apostle saw that. Let's understand what we can count on. We can count on God. God will always be there. So if you want to accept the invitation today, 
Uh, if, you've, if you've been let down, if, if you've uh, let yourself down, if you said, you know, I could have done better, this is always a time to do the invitation where we can say, you know, I'm going to do better. From this moment on, I'm going to try harder. If you need to be baptized today, if you need to give up your life uh, wandering sheep, just wandering all over the place, and you need to say, I need a shepherd, I need to have somebody that I can follow, and I'm going to do that by being baptized. Uh, whatever your need is, the prayers of the church or to be baptized, please accept this invitation by coming forward right now as together we stand and sing.